Thank you, Rachel. What would happen if each of us found a way to reach out to God and include God in more and more of our everyday living? Hi, I'm, I'm Pastor Lynn, and today we have invited some people to come and share a little bit about prayer in their lives, and then we're going to teach you a simple new way that you can pray for others. It's called flash prayer, and it's one of the many ways there are to reimagine prayer. So I'd like to introduce you to our participants. Um, you can wave. There's Chad Smith, Hello. Christine Scoble, Rachel Kane. Yes, thank you so much for agreeing to be here with us. Uh, I'd like to ask you a question to begin with. What does prayer look like for you? So for me, um, I usually start my day with a morning devotion and kind of a more formal prayer that's based on a scripture or a story. Um, but then throughout the day, it's very conversational. It's, um, I think, Lynn, you shared a practice of, you know, using the name of God that kind of speaks to what needs you have at the moment. So source of strength or, you know, protector or um, way maker, what, what have you. Um, and just having that conversational um, type of in the moment need. Um, and sometimes it's texting a friend, we'll, we'll share prayers via text uh, and just whatever is the need for the time or, or even in a phone call. Hmm. Other thoughts? So I sometimes, oh, go ahead. <laughs> for <laughs> me, Prayer um, looks a lot like um, me talking to myself if someone were to walk in on me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I have a lot of, a lot of chit chat with God um, throughout the day. If I'm, you know, in my car or whatever, um, you know, I hear a siren go by and I, and I think about, you know, I hope that person is safe. Um, pray for their safety. I do have formal prayer too, um, formal, formal prayer time attached to um, devotions. Um, and then obviously, you know, corporate prayer in ch at church. But um, a lot of times it's just me talking to myself is what it looks like. <laughs> I find okay. I have to pray a lot after I watch the news <laughs> or read news as of late. So um, I find I have to do that a lot. Yeah, you know, what, the point you're making, Chad, about the stressfulness of, you know, times, I find that uh, I do do formal kinds of prayer times. My best prayer times are, are at night, outside, under the stars, because somehow there's some great comfort in, in a stressful time to just see that, you know what, Orion's still up there. <laughs> Uh, God's still up there. And then I think about how even during the day, you can't see those stars, but they're still there. Um, so those are things that help me. And then during stressful times, I do, at, at my very best moments in a stressful conversation, I whisper, God, I need your help right now. That's the best mm -hmm. I can do with that. Well, what else uh, can you say about your prayer times? I think it's really important to include um, gratitude, or at least for me, that kind of reframes where I'm at. Um, so finding something to be grateful for. And then um, I lost my train of thought. <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, what about then, what about the challenges of prayer? You know, it sounds like we're all just, you know, we're out there praying all the time and 
and we never uh, have any difficulty with prayer. Uh, I don't know. For me, that's not true. How about the rest of you? Anybody got some challenges? We've got a little bit of time. I try to make it as much of a conversation, like Christine says, as I can sometimes, because that's really what I feel it should be. It shouldn't, it doesn't always have to be so formal. Um, it's a conversation with God and uh, it's a point in the middle of the day that we can just, that I can just stop and talk to God for a few minutes. And I'm hoping to make that more of a, a practice in my life. For me, the um, doing something more concentrated or doing something um, more tied to study or devotion, um, that's the harder part for me, keeping that going as a regular practice. I don't, we'll be honest, I don't have any like, and in the morning I get up and I read my devotions and I have my, I've, I've not gotten myself there yet. It's a goal. Um, but to have more, um, I think more consistent structured prayer time as opposed to a lot of my one-offs. I think for me, one thing I uh, struggle with is, um, I don't know if the word is, um, just authenticity. Sometimes I feel like I can't just say what I want, you know, or take COVID away. I mean, because that doesn't seem based in reality, but that's what I want to say. And sometimes that, but really there's no reason not to say that, right? Because God knows what we're thinking anyway. <laughs> so sometimes I get caught up in what should I, you know, what's the right prose? What's the right poetic way to say what I want to say? Mm -hmm. But really I just need to say what's on my heart. That's kind of my struggle sometimes too, is I try to make it too poetic and I try to make it too, you know, uh, too flowy, right? And it should just be a conversation. So, yeah. Right. Well, perhaps those who are watching us are thinking uh, that, that you might like to add some more prayer into your life, but it's hard to figure out how to get started down that path. Well, here's a first small step. We want to share with you uh, an approach to prayer. It's not to do all the time. It's an approach to prayer, and it's called flash prayer. Uh, but to introduce it, uh, first we're going to share some scripture with you. Sure. The scripture is from Mark 6, verse 30 through 34. The apostles gathered around Jesus and told him all they had done and taught. He said to them, come away to a deserted place all by yourself and rest a while. For many were coming and going and they had no leisure even to eat. And they went away in the boat to a deserted place by themselves. Now many saw them going and recognized them, and they hurried there on foot from all the towns and arrived ahead of them. As he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them, because they were like sheep, without a shepherd, and he began to teach them many things. So when we talk about flash prayer, um, it's a quick way to way to pray, but one of the most important things that we need to think about is it's also a time to get in touch with God, and we need to kind of get ourselves quiet for a moment, whether that's a brief closing of our eyes, um, tuning something out, turning something off. If maybe we've heard something on the news that's disturbing and we that triggers a flash prayer in us. Um, so we, we're, we're looking for God's guidance, and I think um, the most important thing um, is to find a way to connect without a lot of words, but also to remember that we should be listening even after we've said what we have to pray. Um, Soren Kierkegaard said, a man prayed, and at first he thought that prayer was talking, but he became more and more quiet until in the end, he realized that prayer is listening. So our experience is pretty simple if we hear someone or we see someone, maybe we're walking past someone on the street um, and they just catch our eye for some reason. They just kind of speak to us that some, something about them, um, you know, needs our help or needs our prayers or, or could use a blessing of some kind. Um, we just send a small but strong and direct prayer toward that person. We want to invite into them the joy of the Lord and a deeper awareness of God's presence. So we also want to say, God, make, make, them, make them understand you're there as well. 
So there are kind of three steps. Anything we have that's sort of a hint that there's this thing we might want to pray about, something we see, something we hear, and we feel called to pray. The second step is just genuine compassion and empathy for the one we're praying for. We need to really feel that we're praying for that person, that they're well, that they're healthy, that they get what they need. We need compassion. And so this is a sending out of compassion, of loving kindness. And then after that, we pray. We actually say our prayer, whatever that prayer is. I pray that that homeless man on the corner, you know, finds a place to stay tonight. Um, I pray that the person passing by in that ambulance ends up being treated and is healthy and strong. So any sort of small, quiet, quick prayer that has to do with what you're inspired by and what you see. So right now, let's go ahead and just think of someone. Maybe it's someone you're seeing right now as you're watching this video. Maybe it is someone you talked to on the phone just before this happened. Maybe an instant message popped up or a text popped up while we were talking. Direct your prayer toward that person, that person that pops into your mind and that seems like needs a genuine prayer and needs to know that God loves them. So we'll go ahead and find ourselves quiet, calm, getting that focus and then saying that quick prayer. That's flash prayer. So Chad, would you like to share some closing words for us? Sure. So uh, beginning next week, every Wednesday at 1215 in the afternoon, we invite you to join us for this noontime prayer space. You can join us live here on Zoom, or you can watch the recording when you feel the need for more prayer in your life. We would love to have you join us and other members of Narden Park as we develop more powerful prayers in our life. Be open to those moments of compassion and those nudges and pray. It doesn't always take many words or much time.